Hi there, I'm Tony Glenn and welcome back to the PGG Rights and Stud Tour. Now this week we're down in sunny Southland again, we're catching up with Pip Wilson and Brian Dickinson. They've got Montana Perindale Stud here. Big day weaning tomorrow, we're going to head out on the hills and muster up a few ewes and lambs. We'll see you soon. Been a while since I've ridden with you, Pippi. Yeah, it must be 20 years or something, wouldn't it be? Birchwood Cavalcade. Yeah. And Tubby was just a youngster, wasn't she? Yeah. That was her first trip. Eight days of boozing up around the Takatimus. So it's the Waikaka district we're in, Pip, in relation to the town whereabouts are we? Oh, we're pretty close actually. Um, we're about five k's out up the Wyndon Valley Road and there's just a no exit road that cuts back into the hills. Yeah, seems like a fairly big place. Uh, it's about 2,000 acres um, and probably over half of that's just tussock hill. Yeah, how many ewes Over sign tussock. How many ewes? Uh, about five and a half thousand. So when did you start the stud, Pip? Um, yeah, back in 1986 or 84, I think it was. And it was like my dad, I was just a kidlet, yeah. and um, dad was quite keen on breeding, you know, breeding our own Perindale rams. And yeah, so was I. We just worked together and we drafted up about 100 real nice ewes, or what we thought were nice. And, um, you must and have then, had some fairly good commercial ewes. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Dad's very particular stockman. And then um, we went and bought about 60 ewes off a guy, Robert Hall, and they were excellent ewes, and they were stern bloodlines. And Robert's uh, stud was called Lily's Leaf. Um, and he just wanted to concentrate on his Angus cattle at the time. So, um, yeah, which was very good for us. They were good, fertile, very fertile, actually, ewes. And, um, great length and great bone and um, yeah they were you know that was a real good move you know in hindsight at the time you never know yeah. if you're buying good stuff or not um, no matter what people tell you but they were excellent sheep and so that sort of set the ball rolling and we just bred for ourselves and then the odd neighbour wanted some rams and yeah just took it from there and um, dad um, retired and I'd bought a place up at Mosburn. About 1973 we first went into Perindale because the Romneys at Wyndham when we went there were not performing. I had, I had to do something fairly drastic if I was going to be a, a one, man, one man farmer and not have about six people running around at lambing time. So we went into Perindale so we used a cheviot over the Romneys for a start and then stabilised in Perindale from then on. And. Uh, in those days, a lot of people looked down their nose at you know, if you had parent owls and said, oh, you need about 200 sheep to get a bale of wool. And because some of them were very poor wool. So I decided there and then you had to concentrate on wool weights and quality. And I, all the time I was farming there, I used to cull any of the rams that didn't quite measure it up when we weighed the wool. So we tried to concentrate on wool, but nowadays, some people are tending to neglect wool, but I still think it's important to, to keep an eye on it and try and get consistency in your flock. Pip fairly keen on the stock right from a, from a little girl, Ernie? Well, yes, she's always been keen on horses and dogs and, and probably more laterally sheep. Or if it was there when she was young, it probably wasn't so obvious with the sheep, but, but she certainly had a base interest in stock all along. So you enjoyed growing up in Southland, Pip? I'm sure I did. Yeah, no, it's been pretty good really. I was born in Canterbury yeah. and mum and dad uh, shifted farms, went to Mimahau, which is near Wyndham, when I was just a, I think it was about 18 months old or something. Yeah. And yeah, and I always thought I'd want to be back up, you know, further north, but um, I've actually fallen in love with Southland pretty much and yeah. it's perfect climate for farming. I've had um, lots of fun actually doing casual mustering and um, through 
yeah, Southland right up to, well, Glen Tanner, I think, would be as far away as I've worked. And yeah. just basically got paid for doing what I love doing. Must have been a big move, getting, getting, buying the place at Mosbin on your own, little girl by herself there. Yep. No, a few people laughed at me, actually. Like, when I was buying, land was very unfashionable at the time. Um, and you could, yeah, buy land pretty cheaply. And Mosburn was pretty much the cheapest place in the South Island, so that's where I went to get a start. And, um, yeah, just my accountant sort of pretty much looked at me and said, well, how on earth are you going to make this work? And I said, I'll make it work. And, um, yeah, Alan Hubbard, he was my accountant, and, and he gave me some good advice, but he wouldn't beat around the bush if, if he thought you, you know, if you couldn't do it, he'd just say. And I assured him I could do it. And, um, yeah, and that's partly where the stud come in. Um, I decided to grow that part of my business, and, and that developed, and um, in the end he ended up congratulating me and, and saying no, she was all good. A bit of a privilege to be invited here today, Graham. <laughs> yes, it's an annual annual trip. Yeah, yeah it's, it's quite enjoyable coming over and mustering on the hill for a change. You'll be back for back for a few years to help an old mate. Yeah, probably. Five or six now, I suppose. So we're dog trialling mates. We travel, travel to championships together and club trials. And yeah. So they come off the hill, all right? Yeah, they did. They mustered up well. Yeah. yeah, they're nice and active sheep. And you're using a bit of the breed yourself, there, Graham? Yeah, I've been buying rams off Pip and Brian for probably five or six years now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And where's your operation? Uh, Lawrence. Yeah. And, and plenty of work down there for these fellows. Yeah. Yeah. I probably have too many dogs for the size of the place, but yeah. that's part of my hobby. Yeah, mm. yeah. And kicking around a few trials this year? I will be, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll we'll start any time now. Yeah. And you'll be away to Taupo? Yes, I hope so. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Look forward to the championships every year. And who's the who's the best hope here today? Oh, probably these two here. Yeah. Don and Tweed still. Yeah. Yep. We've got young dogs, but uh, yeah, they're in varying stages of readiness. Yeah. Mm. And when do you reckon they'll let you away with uh, being on that handpiece? <laughs> You're losing a bit of sweat there today. I was, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't um, expecting that. Well, once you can't swing on the peacemaker, you're not invited back, is it? Yeah, yeah I, I imagine that'll be the case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a fairly big day, Graham. Do you reckon we'd better go and check out uh, Brian's freezer and see what's in there? I think it'd be rude not to. Yeah, I'll have a look. OK. <laughs> Good thing. <laughs> OK. Just a little place. It was 165 acres, um, and I leased some more ground, which, because my parents moved there, they followed me um, in their retirement. And yeah, they moved down there and um, they bought 150 acres. So I leased that off them as well. Uh, so I had, I think, 1150 ewes and 500, I grew up to about 500 stud ewes by that stage. Yeah. So stud ewes now? Uh, about 600. And yeah, I'm wanting to grow that a bit more. Yeah. Just up to selling about 200 rams. Yeah, is that as much as you'd like to get to, 200 rams? Pretty much. I don't want to get too carried away with it. And I know all my different bloodlines and all my stud size, uh, and I don't want to lose that. Like, that's part of my keeping it simple philosophy. That's it's, your philosophy, keep it simple. Yeah, very much in business and my stock. Yeah. Yeah. And technology-wise, with, with the stud, there's a lot going on out there. You, you, you're not amongst all that too much with your keep it simple attitude? Yes. Um, yeah, there's a lot of money can be spent on that technology side and, and there's a lot of rocket scientists in the stud business. So I'm quite happy to just let them spend the money and, and I'll sit back and, and, um, and then I'll pick up a ram from, you know, from there and I'll work on the structural soundness and, you know, constitution and those bread and butter things yeah um, and I, I still firmly believe if you work on those basics you can't go wrong and you breed a good sheep or a good horse or a good dog. Johnny Templeton uh, commonly known as JT around these parts here at Manapori Cathedral Peaks and uh, what are you running here John? 
Uh, got three and a half thousand ewes and um, 1,100 hinds. Now, Evan, way prior to, to coming here, you've, you've sourced rams from Pip for quite a few years now on, on different places. Where'd that all start? Yeah, well, um, I've used her rams on three different properties. Um, you know, Central Otago, extremely dry, Water Peak Station, um, more of an extensive property with some very good flats, but, um, you know, big hill country place. And also at Mara Station um, was the first place I used them. Um, and just, yeah, on the way to Pip, really, through dog trials, got to know her. Um, we shared the same views on, on, on sheep. Um, when I first got involved using Pip's ram, she didn't actually have any recorded stock or figures and wasn't on sill or whatever. Um, but she had, she's a stickler for constitution and confirmation. And um, I liked the type of her sheep. I liked the way she treated them. And I thought, you know, as a Perindale, they still had pricky ears, which a lot of Perindale breeds now, their ears are out here. You think they're sort of half Romney, they don't have the alertness or the vigour. Where I was sourcing my ram lambs at her commercial use was the backbone of her study. You know, it was, that's where all her blood was getting used and treated, tested in the commercial scene. So, um, so I started buying 2 rams and uh, that was at Wilder Peak. We only used ram lambs at Mara and then at Dunstan Burn Station, St Bathans, same thing, using 2 rams. They're bloody good sheep. Um, very deep bodied. Good RCNs, they look like they've got ticks. A lot of people think they've got half ticks, or half perindale. Good shape, um, they've got vigour, they can bounce back from tough times. And, um, and Pip treats them in a very commercial manner, which is bloody good when you're buying rams. You don't want them feed cabbages over the back fence there, so no, no. you want to be getting what you see. Grant McMaster here at Closeburn Station. Where's Closeburn, Grant? Oh, on the shores of the beautiful Lake Wagatapu, and on a day like this, it's quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's a beautiful day, just a little bit hot for working in the arts. Yeah, I'm pleased you came and got me away. We're 12 k's out of Queenstown, on the Queenstown Glenorchy Road. We've got um, Mount uh, Crichton on our top side, and uh, Ben Lohman Station neighbours us on the bottom side. And out behind us here we've got Moak Lake, and that's basically where Crichton and Ben Lohman and Closeburn, we sort of meet over there in the, underneath those rocks somewhere. Yeah. Some fairly rugged country here. Yeah, no, there is. It's a uh, pretty short growing season here. Well, a bloody short growing season, really. It's, uh, you know, where we are here, we're about 2,600 feet above sea level. You know, a continual winter, really. It's just permafrost here and uh, cold. Spring, you're always waiting on the spring to come. It is a hard environment. Yeah. Now, sheep and cattle. Sheep and cattle, yeah. We've got um, 1,500 Perindale ewes. Uh, all my rams are from Montana, Pip Wilson. Pip the Perindale. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, I've been at Closeburn seven years now, and uh, when I came here, I, uh, I'd i seen what our Perindales had done, uh, well, mainly at my neighbour across the road, Walter Peak, when John Templeton was there. I spent quite a few years going in there in the falls and what have you. And um, I was always impressed with what the Perindale ewes were doing there and the country they were on and, and how high they, you know, how high they were. And um, when I got the manager's job here, I thought, well, it's not quite as warm as Walter Peak, but you know, the the rams will do half the job, and we might be able to do the rest type thing. Yeah. And it, yeah, haven't looked back really. It's just you know they've been uh, they're great for this place. They get up high and, and they're doing a good job there. Well, I, I like Pip's pair of because hey, she's um, she's pretty ruthless on them. I mean, if they look at her the wrong way, they're they're out type <laughs> thing. And um, but yeah, they you know they're good boned. I, I like the wool and um, I, I like the confirmation. Most of the year. The studs run with the commercials um, and then we um, run them over the conveyor and draft them off just before mating time and single sire mate and then as soon as that's over they're back with the commercials for the winter. They actually get put in um, these front faces across here um, for lambing and we don't touch them and yeah tailing time's the first time they get touched. So if they die out there, well, tough titty, pretty much. Yeah. And, yeah, tailing time, they come in, they get tailed, and then not long after tailing, we will um, just shed them off, the ewes with the lambs, which is a good bit of dog training. Yeah. Dog trialling. Um, it takes as long as it takes. 
and you get to know the individual. I personally get to see, you know, the individual lambs and I'll have the ewes colour coded so they've got a spot on their back so I can just look and, and see, you know, the blue blue shoulder for example is their lambs are by such and such or yellow loin is by such and such. So I get a real feel for the trends of um, what the sires are doing and it's quite surprising. Just uh, recently bought a ram from a little bit up country. Yep, yeah, from Tim Anderson, Mount Guardian. I've wanted one of Tim's rams for a while. He breeds similar type sheep, the medium size. Um, and Tim actually gave me, of all the stud breeders, like they've all, well not all of them, but some of them have given me some good wee tips here and there. But um, yeah, a few years ago, um, yeah, Tim gave me champion ram at a show and, and I chatted away to him and he said, that extremes are out. Just keep that in mind, um, because I I was surprised that he he gave my ram the champion. There was 18 other good rams in the class, and mine wasn't the biggest and he wasn't the prettiest, but he was correct. And um, that extremes are out. I've just I keep going back to that time and time again. Like you know that's been very it's been a wonderful wee piece of advice from him. Oh, we've probably got about uh, 3,200 hectares and running about 10,000 breeding ewes and plus 2,000 hoggets replacements and 300 cows and a couple hundred deer. Yeah. Yep. Fairly much sort of a place here, this goes up fairly high too. Yeah, no, it's pretty high up there. We've probably got, oh, I don't know how much flat we've got, but it's probably a good balance anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Garston, get fairly cold in the winter. Yeah, no, it does get cold, quite cold winters, but it hasn't been too bad for the last year, but no, it can be very cold here. Yeah, have a good lambing? Yeah, no, it was pretty good, yeah. Probably one of the better lambings we've had for a while. Um, I can't remember what this percentage was, but, you know, it was way up on last year. Yeah. Yeah. Now the rams. You're getting the rams here from Pip. Yeah, from no, we, yeah we, went, we went and got some off Pip last year. And, uh, yeah, they're very good rams. And we brought them home and stuck them out. And then, of course, the winter tells on rams here because they don't get a lot to eat in the winter time, And they sort of come through... Yeah, you know, really good through the winter, which is a good sign for rams that come through the winter good. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go above any higher than 180% scanning over all our commercial ewes, and at, at scanning time the studs are mixed in, so um, they're just part of the crew. And yeah, we did 177 last year, and I think the year before 176, so thereabouts. If you start getting over 180%, you start running into more and more triplets which I'm not a fan of, not for hill country. Um, twins is where it's at, and singles, I don't want to know them. Like, any single stud lambs, uh, they just go get culled out as store lambs. We don't even keep them for commercials. And um, yeah, lambing percent this last year was 148 to the ram. That's over all our ewes, to do and mixed age. And last year was 147, and the year before was 146. So I come here four years ago, and Brian's been using my rams for 12 years or something. Um, and I said, you know, we'll do 150. And he was like, oh no, we won't be doing that on this country. Um, but, you know, we've had a little bit of abortion and we've had some, you know, pretty shoddy weather. Um, so, you know, 150 is very achievable. And, and where it, you know, where I want to be at. It's been a big day, Brian. Yeah, it has been a big day. Yeah, it's been, everything's gone really well. And, um, yeah, we've had a very good team of helpers today. I've been absolutely wrapped to have uh, Mark and Tom here helping with winning today. And, and uh, you know, he goes right in the handpiece too, so. Yeah. That was, that was great. And Tom too is, uh, yeah, he's, he shows a lot of initiative and you know, I've been very proud of them both the way they've worked today. So Roger Tweed, Graham Dickey, Khan, they've been coming here and helping us at tailing time and at winning time for, a, for quite a few years now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that makes, makes it a lot easier. So days like today, we usually um, put all our sheep over in this day, but um, we're just getting a few too many lambs about us now to, to do it all in one day. So They're looking healthy. They are. They are, they're fairly fiery, all right. And, and clean. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, it's good, healthy country. Um, this, this season's really suited our sheep here with, um, you know, continual rain, you know, every day or every other day lately, so, or in the early part of December and January, so it suits the hill, keeps the clover ticking on the hill. And how long have you been in, in the Perindale side of things? Well, um, I initially had wireries, uh, like a lot of people. I, I used wireries for quite a, quite a while, but, um, <coughs> you know, that, I uh, was finding that we were just getting a little bit too much, uh, I don't know whether it was inbreed or what, but we needed a change. And I toyed with the idea of putting a Perindale through at the time, but um, an old guy, Robbie McDonald, talked me into putting a Cheviot Ram across uh, our Wairiri ewes, and the Cheviot across them was a great cross. And I, I started, um, and then I, and that was about the time I met Pip, and, and I started to use her rams over those first cross ewes. And I've been using them, her rams, for quite a few years now. And our lambing percentage has, has gone from, you know, in the probably mid 120s to to almost, we, we haven't broke 150 yet, but we're just knocking on the door. So yeah. it's uh, been continual improvement since I started to use her rams. It wasn't just to get in the good books. No, <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, they've been really good uh, and they suit the country. Now you've had a bit to do with Pip for, for quite a while and with, with the rams and with store lambs. How does that all work for you guys? Uh, really well. Um, Pip used to come and give us a hand the odd time with stock work at home and that's sort of how we got to know Pip. And, and then I used to go and give her a wee hand with tailing and a few wee jobs when she had a wee farm at home. And uh, that's how it sort of all come about really. We sort of got uh, to know her wee stud. Um, and they were just really good sheep and looked good and their st stock were really, you know, good stock and uh, so that's how we sort of got a, into buying Pip's rams and then uh, we bought a few, not many stores off Pip when she was at home but when she's moved down to Waikaka here we've been buying um, <coughs> last like three years been buying lambs from here and uh, they shift very well and do very well and so yeah so we're pretty happy with uh, you know with the operation here. Yeah. Now do you have contracts to fill there? Or? Yes, we've got a, we've got a contracts with uh, CMP, and uh, so we uh, well we I don't know, probably buying between four and five thousand lambs a year, and uh, to supply to fill these contracts, and we generally fatten around the, between 18, 18 and a half, 19 kilos, um, but they will we have had heavyweight contracts, so they will grow out to you know a heavyweight contract if you want them to, uh, but yeah, no, they're just a good meaty bit of depth about them and yeah we just they're a good good doing sheep yeah. Now you've had quite a bit to do with Pip for, for a few years now haven't you? Yeah yep yep so now we've been uh, had a wee bit to do with Montana over, over the years so yep yeah, they seem to be a good type of sheep and she uh, seems to be breeding um, what the market wants. So, yeah. yeah. Starting to get her name out there now wee Pippi? Yeah yep no, no she eats uh, Pip and Brian actually purchased a top price ram there at the golf here the other day so you know they're, they're right at the cutting edge of things and you know putting their money into the genetics, so um, yeah, they're seeing the rewards. And the, and the men, have been good to you? Yeah, no, they've been brilliant. Um, I mean, you get the odd random one. Yeah. Just like you get the odd feral dog, like this <laughs> odd feral <laughs> man. But yeah. yeah, no, honestly, like I couldn't wish for, if I've ever had a problem with my farming when I was farming on my own or anything, the neighbours and yeah, there was always some good farmer out there that would be happy to take the time to give me some advice and help me on my way and, and they probably don't even realise they're helping that much. They'll just give you a little tip here and a little tip there and and um, yeah, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed working in the men's world. For more information on the PGG Rights and Stud Tour, visit ruraltv.co.nz and come and join us on Facebook.